I'm Marty Garbus. I'm a, an attorney, a trial attorney. I've written six books. I've tried hundreds of cases. I've traveled pretty much throughout the United States trying cases as well as doing international human rights work. You also had the media, in that case, uh, doing things that they were not supposed to do. For example, the jurors were supposed to have their names kept secret. Kept secret so that the community would not know who they are and not put pressure on them to convict. Instead, what the media did, uh, and we're talking about local media, national media, we're talking about radio, television, print. What they did is they let the public in Miami know who the jurors were. In other words, after the uh, trial day, they would follow the jurors out to the parking lots and they would uh, uh, take pictures of the jurors going into cars and you could see the license plates and you saw the faces. So these people were then coming home to an atmosphere where the hostility against Castro, but also four Americans, three Americans, were killed. So that it was impossible to have a fair trial. Now, in the Cuban case, the case is tried in 1999, 2000, 2001. We didn't find out about that until 2006. So by the time we found out about what was going on in that particular case, uh, they had been uh, tried, convicted, and their convictions had been affirmed. Now, um, the, and the attempt to get that information about the extent of the media and all that stuff was very, very difficult. We spent a long, long time doing it. And, you know, it, it's true that, and also, it wasn't just the, the, the presidential politics, it was also local politics in Miami a man named Mascanosa, the whole question of, of uh, getting funds there. The Congress, uh, through various entities, was sending 10 to $15 million a year down to Miami uh, uh, for anti-Castro, but also anti-these particular guys. These guys became the focus of it. My view was that it would be very difficult to get them out, uh, I saw what had happened. I thought it was unique in America. Uh, I was also aware of the fact that uh, the likelihood of them coming out through legal means was very remote. Uh, that you could not get, I tried for, when I got into the case. I went down to Florida, I spoke to people, I tried to speak to jurors. Basically, the case was on lockdown. The jurors didn't want to talk. They, they had done what they had done. They didn't want to get themselves exposed. The judge, who was a novice, basically, had gone on and had a relatively distinguished career. Uh, this, this was one of her first cases on, in the federal court. She had been a state court judge before. Uh, but basically, and it was on lockdown, the defense lawyers in the case couldn't get information from the United States government back in 1990, in 2000. 1999, 2000, 2001, and uh, any possibility, it was much more difficult for me. In other words, coming in 10, 12 years later, after the Supreme Court denied review in the case. I met Gerardo, I met some of the people. Uh, I had deep feelings that they had been railroaded. What was happening to them in prison was awful. They were singled out in an American prison system which can be very brutal. At the time of the shoot down, uh, Rubio and other people in uh, Jeb Bush were saying indict Castro, indict Castro. They never had the information. They believed they could get it from Gerardo. So if you take an American prison system, which can be as bad as it can be, and then you are determined to break this guy and you're determined every day to do that, and there's a whole government apparatus which is watching him to see if he can be broken. Uh, so then it's a unique situation. And I thought that given what I knew of the prison system, given what I knew of criminal law and media law, that I was somewhat uniquely able to help him, recognizing that it was probably impossible. Mm -hmm.